Hi, Nana here. Now we are going to see the import of a purchase order into Fusion applications. I'm working on 19B and then let us see about how to do that. So go there and then have a look at it. So you already have this file. Okay, fine. Uh, this is the 26th file, I think. I'm sorry. Let me go there. Yeah, uh, not the 26th file. <coughs> Mm. This is called for one second. Yeah, I'm correct. It's only 26 byte. So once when you open this 26th file, <coughs> you will be able to see this one. So you have to see it. So here I will now take up about how to do it now. So take up the copy of this now <coughs> and then put down a new one. So you'll be getting it and then here you choose the application first the application is what procurement here you choose it now and then if you go to the file you now say your module and then afterwards you choose the release also <clears throat> now uh, it's a 18 c or whatever it is it's now 19b now so we are working on 19b you go there and then choose 19b now the release is now chosen and then afterwards look at the books on the left hand side now <clears throat> go there in the left hand side we have the books now click on the books so click on the books now the books is now located and then afterwards what happens look at the file based data import under the development now. Under the development, you can now identify the file based data import now. Find the page down and then go down to the development now. So you have got lots of uh, implementation guides and user guides from here now. So you can very well uh, go on and study everything. It will be explaining the modules fully. Under the development, uh, we have the file based data import and then click on the HTML. So once on the HTML, again go to the purchasing on the left hand side now. <coughs> the file based data import. You will now find for the blanket purchase agreement, this is the this is the Excel file actually. And then if you go down, and this is for the contract purchase agreement. This is the Excel file. <clears throat> the blanket purchase agreement has got a three plus three six uh, uh, sheets actually. The blanket purchase agreement has got six sheets, whereas the contract purchase agreement has got only two sheets now. And then you now go to the purchase orders now. We are going to see the purchase orders. So the blanket purchase agreement and the contract purchase agreements are lab exercises for you. You can buy them. On the purchase order file, I got one file, and then it has got four sheets. One of the headers, one of the lines. One of the uh, line locations, and then uh, next is what and the distribution section. Right. So uh, the line location is the schedules are known as uh, line locations actually. Right. So line schedules and distributions are the three ones. So the schedule is known as line locations actually inside, and then line schedules and distributions then headers. So I already downloaded, and then what I did is I already modified it for my B01 login now. So you go there and have a look at it now. <clears throat> it's already done. So we'll open it up. Uh, Open it up and then you edit it. So we already made it as a P01 file. Let me make it as a 43rd file so that what happens, it will also go automatically now. So let's make it as 43. <coughs> so this has been uh, what happens, has been modified by me already. And you know, open it up and then have a look. So opening it up. So I know go to that what's called the first one, the headers one. I'm going to view headers. One. So go home now. Uh, uh, that will be having an interface key now. Find the ABC interface key. Find action is original and then uh, batch ID. Here, batch ID is not that important. Uh, whereas, uh, uh, anyhow, I already uh, done a test now. Find that I will know what happens. I know. First of all, enable the reading, allow make a change now. Uh, so, I do not want this to repeat actually. Find that I will not make a change to underscore. Whereas, in item import, a batch ID is very important. Here, it's not that important. Whatever you give, it's okay. It doesn't matter. But uh, do not repeat the same batch ID for multiple imports actually. So, the document type is standard code. And drop it down, <coughs> and then you got only one one option available here. I'm now populating my procurement business unit now. <coughs> procurement business unit, and then my requisitioning business unit, and then my sold to legal entity has been provided. So remember, it's a so good sold to legal entity actually. Right? So it's a BU, the BU, and then the LE actually. And then, go further. And then uh, the built to BU is now populated. The buyer is populated. Find the last name, comma space, first name. Right? That way we have to write it now. Go there. So currency code is USD. <coughs> go further. Go further. And then uh, I will now give a PO description of whether it doesn't modify it. Uh, PO, uh, PO <coughs> First, I'll then find whether. So this description will be coming on the PO actually. And then the built location, ship location, and then the supplier has been populated. <coughs> the site is now populated. Go further, go further. So payment term is immediate. And uh, uh, the initiating part is buyer. So you can even put, remember the payment terms do not have any list of values and so what happens. You have to exactly populate it. If you are putting in different payment terms, basically, uh, require acknowledgement is not required. <coughs> go further, go further. 
and then what happens? I will not say note to supplier. Uh, I will now put what happens? The header note to supplier. Okay, header note to supplier. So we can even have a line level note to supplier also. Fine with that. So here also what happens? The header header note to receiver. So header note to receiver. I know I'm making a change. Okay, that's what so that we can we distinguish see the line level uh, sub notes as well as the header level notes actually. The header note uh, note level and that's what else. And then I'll go for the afterwards the attribute and all what happens if you don't fill anything at all. And then you get to make it R and D other sometimes with that. Okay, okay. So we have filled up this thing from you go to the one. next is lines now. The lines. the lines, what happens in the header? We have one interface key ABC, and then it has to reference this now. Okay, okay. Right. So the interface key ABC has to reference it, and then it is now having a ABC ABC one now, right? It is now referencing which interface key as such now. And then action is add. So we'll now see what are the actions that are available. Okay, only add is available. Lines one, <clears throat> first line goods. Then this item I have given. Now fine, the first item I have taken now. Fine, and then the item description also is there. <clears throat> and then of course the category is required. So category I have not taken up from the item as such. Now fine. So uh, you you know about where to take the categories and all. <clears throat> uh, if you go there, okay, it's not there actually. Fine. So you you can pick up the category from the item itself and go from it. And then I'm putting a whole quantity and then the units of measure that I'm putting is EA, not EACH, EA in my thing. The price is three now, fine. So the price is three. Uh, I'm keeping it as such now. <clears throat> and then here, what I'm going to say, note to vendor actually. Uh, I will not say note to supplier or whatever it is now. Fine, note to supplier. Uh, again, uh, on the line level now, fine. Uh, line note to supplier. <clears throat> when there is a header note to supplier, then uh, here is also what happens a uh, line note to where was the receiver. So I am not putting it, but I have not tested with the attachment. I don't know where to do the attachment. Okay, fine. Attachment, you please make an R&D and then let me know about where to do the attachment. Okay, fine. Somewhere, some field may be there for the attachments. No, only descriptive ones are there. No, fine. Again, everything is okay. And then save it. And then the line location is nothing but schedules actually. Line location is schedules. Fine. So it's the participle. The schedule is one now. Fine. The ship location has been populated. And the quantity is small, and the mid bay date is now given from 8th, 5th of August. Actually, the promise date is also 5th of August. So, 5th of August, I given both the places now. Destination type is inventory. And then, uh, what are the choices available here? Fine, we'll see this one. Fine, okay, expense also is possible. Okay. Uh, <coughs> go for that, go for that. Uh, and then, uh, there are plenty of fields that you can even uh, populate the remaining fields and then uh, see how they are all going to behave now. So, I have now only given a bare minimum amount of entries over here. Now, fine, okay. So, again, what happens in the, in the line? Uh, schedules we have this now fine with that i will not say uh, what is it uh, note to receiver now fine i will not say schedule note to receiver and then uh, and this is a schedule note to receiver so tax classification i'm not including it now so i have line level header level and then schedule level note to receiver you know see what everything where exactly they are all coming <clears throat> some attribute may be for attachments actually i'm not sure about it, which one it is for now Commit now, fine, no, then. Get on another. You go to the distributions now, fine. Distribution is now again referencing this ABC11. See, the previous one, what happens is ABC11 is referencing ABC1. And then the lines region, what happens is ABC1 is referencing ABC. So, one by one, it has to reference each and every one. So, ABC11 is now referencing ABC11. So the distribution is one now. And go for that. Quantity is 12. <clears throat> fine. No need to put any charge account, fine. Everything will be automatically picked up from your marriage mapping set now. Manage mapping set will be giving you all the charts accounts over here. And if you want to override it, then only what happens, you have to do it now. Otherwise, what happens, don't give anything. Whereas, while you're importing uh, item, I mean, stock import, we need to provide the, what happens, the charge account now. Right? Because that is not going to pick up from manage mapping set that we are entering manually while we're doing manually. So, there we have to enter the, what happens, the accounts <coughs> when you're performing a business, a, a stock import now. But here it is not required. It will pick up so many things automatically, actually. And that's it. Fine. Right? So we are now completed all the filling of all the sheets. Now fine, go there, go to the first sheet, and then we'll now go there, and then we'll now go there, and then we'll now first of all save it now, save it, and, go there, yes. and then click on generate CSV file. So here, what happens? I made so many mistakes, and then what happens? Uh, I will now make a new one now. <clears throat> I made small, small mistakes, and then I, what happens? <laughs> I've been repeated <laughs> around six times now. Then only I succeeded. But you should do it now. First one go now. I have made six times. A teacher can make any number of mistakes, but students should not make even a single mistake now. <laughs> Import and then seventh one. I'm breaking up. So seventh one. I made six mistakes and then six are there. Seventh one. 
sixth only I succeeded because of some uh, small small mistakes. <clears throat> so in the import, what happens uh, now? First the header is coming. First of all, I have given a name now, and then uh, in the same file, what happens? The header is getting imported. But only the first file has to be changed. The remaining files should not be changed. Actually, fine. The header header is now give a save now. And then afterwards, it will now go for the lines now. Lines interface will be saved on the same directory actually, on the same directory of import now. Right? So the issue that what happens? You are not putting everything on the same directory actually. <clears throat> is now import fine. Click on save now. And then afterwards, next one is what it is a line locations, which is nothing but schedules now on the same directory import thing. Give a save, and then finally the distributions will be saved. So the people distributions, all the four files are saved in the same one file. Click on save now, and then afterwards, what about we close this file without doing any save now? And then don't save, don't save, and then close it. Now, what happens? We'll now go into the system and then bring it to the uh, what happens? Uh, the interface tables. Fine. Click on new process and then go for the load interface file by import. Now, click on OK now. Fine. Right. And then while doing it, we can even bring this file into the UZM area. Fine. Universal content, content management area. We can even bring it in one go. So go there. And then the parameters will be populated along this one. Drop it down. This is the import orders. Is a is a what's called is the concurrent is a is the area UCM area actually. Go there. It's the import. Capital orders. I is capital C is O is capital. If we don't give it, it will not be coming properly. You can choose it. And then the application name is purchasing is coming. Click on OK now. And then drop down and then choose your file over there. <coughs> Upload a new file. So by which the file will be coming to the UCM area and then finally to the, uh, the interface area. Choose the seventh file and then click on OK. <coughs> not done. So the file is now going to be imported. <coughs> So go there and then click on submit now. Now the concurrent again is import orders now. Fine, import orders can be run. Otherwise, what happens? We can even go from the purchasing area itself and then you can perform an import. So now the import line load interface file for import is now running. And wait for the thing to complete now. Not going to complete now. It is now going to trigger four such load files now. Fine, one for the header, one for line, one for schedules, and then one for distribution now. So four such a load file for interface is now running. After the transfer file and then this one. And both file. So six files are running now, fine. Completed. So the load interpose file has now triggered, spawned some five concurrents. One is for the header, the lines, the line locations, and then in uh, distributions. Now this is the transfer file. Now what happens? We go there, go to the uh, purchasing area now. So in the purchasing area, you go there. And then in this place, you go there and then put it do the import. So click on the import order now, fine. On the purchasing area, fine. Uh, I will not tell you what how to go there, fine. Click on the home icon. And then here, from here, what happens? You go to the procurement and then go to the purchase orders now. So, by count, procurement and purchase orders. And then from here, what happens? You go there and then go to the import orders. Click on the import orders. <coughs> and then here, you submit a new concurrent over here. And click on it. And then click on the submit new process now. Click on it. And then the procurement view is dropped down. And then you choose the procurement view. And then uh, default buyer is EMP1, comma, space, uh, B01 now. <coughs> I don't know whether the space is required or not, but I give a space is working actually. And EMP1, comma, space, B01 now is working. Go there, click on submit for approval, and then the remaining uh, the batch ID is not required only for the item import. The batch ID is very important, otherwise, what happens? You can even leave the remaining things blank actually. Find the default requisition view is also there. So, with these parameters, whatever whatever is having a star mark is a must now. Okay, you're okay, given everything, click on submit now. So, the import process is now triggered, and then that will be importing the entire one now. <clears throat> from the interface table to the base tables of purchasing now. And then it will now pick up all the defaults actually. Fine. The defaults are getting picked up now. <clears throat> Uh, from wherever you are written off and click on OK now. <clears throat> so the process is now running and then refresh it and then here itself we can now view the output now. So we can view the output and refresh it now. So it's going to run now. <clears throat> I think it has got succeeded. Uh, no, it's running. <clears throat> so it's running now. So once when it is completed, we can even view the output of it now straight away. So so simple, and then uh, you may have to import some thousands of orders. Uh, before you go live, actually, and click on the view output. I have written only minimal parameters, and then you can even go for uh, testing with uh, some more parameters, actually. <coughs> now, use output of it. So, in the meantime, what happens? Uh, let us go there, and then here uh, we will now have a look at what happens. Space. Uh, okay, it's still coming. <coughs> view output is coming. Or what is that? So, Click on the view output now. And just so <coughs> download the output now. The system has now become slow actually. Now click on this ESS output now. 
and then let me save it here. Five here now. So choose your location and I click on save now. And then have a look at it now. All right. And click on the file and then take copy with the control A and then copy control C and then close it. And then put my board file and then have a look at it now. I'm putting it in the board file now. <coughs> so word file, I'm opening it up and then I'm putting it on space between the It says import document job started and then what happens is not done. And then I have process uh, orders imported successfully. The job is finished. This is success actually. So close it now. Now we'll now go on and have a look at the system now. Click on it. Now complete it. Uh, we'll now go to the same place. Here yeah, it's the import orders and then click on done and then have a look at it. So it is an import test too actually. <clears throat> so click on done and then we'll now go to the manage orders now. So click on it and then we'll go to the manage orders now. So the manage orders will give the list of it on the click on manage orders. And then click on search by giving this employee number. We have already given the employee number also. The, the procurement agent has been given over there now. So because of which I will now show you this now. <clears throat> so with the employee buyer over here, and then click on search now, it will show you all the latest orders over here now. So the latest order is import two, import two test now. Fine. Initially I imported test one, I made it now. So now it is import test two now. So PO import test two has now successfully come and then it is the open. Open means what? It is already approved now. I will now click on the hyperlink on the order now. I will click on the hyperlink on the order now. <clears throat> so you can now see what are the parameters which has come over here now. So all the uh, notes which you are given at the header level, uh, line level, and then the uh, schedule levels, fine. It has to come over here now. Uh, and uh, please check about how to attach files also during import. And somewhere it will be there. So if you are successful in attaching it, it will be excellent actually. So instance is not slow now uh, because of which it is not coming up very fast now. Uh, and then if you what happens, good actions and then go to edit, it will be editing it actually. Fine. I am not editing it. And you click on underline. What happens? You are going to go to view it now. Nothing else we are doing in section. Just do this. So now the order is open now. You can see everything. So the description is a PO import test two is a come now. And then I will now go down and then have a look at it now. So you can now see uh, these shipping method, the freight terms, the FOB have not given anything on the import now. But it is now picking up from uh, uh, the configure procurement business function. Uh, go there. Uh, the receiving parameter configure procurement business function. So if you go to the configure procurement business function, you can very well see the payment terms is 2 by 1030, B01 carrier, B01 subface flight, and then destination, everything in In this place, if you go there, you see B01 carrier, subface flight, the destination, and then the immediate everything has come from the place. I think immediate has also been given on the, uh, on the what's called on the um, FBDA uh, template now. Now we have a, what's called the thing, and then uh, this says that whatever notes exist on the line level now. So if you click on the, the header, header level note. Now, thank you. If you go to the notes and the you can also see the header level notes. So notes will be showing you the header level notes now. At the top. So we are attached a header level note as well as a, 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 a header level uh, uh, note to supplier as well as receiver now. So that we can see now. And, uh, so it will be shown over here. And so you can now see the header level uh, note to supplier as well as the header level note to receiver now. And then the line level, if you click on the attachment, on the line level, we have an attachment icon is there, and note exists. And if you click on it, it will show you the line level notes for the particular purchase order. And you can even go to the details and then have a look at the line. So we have 12 quantities ordered, and then uh, three is the price now, and the total order is uh, 36. So price also has given us three. So all these things are coming here now. So you can see a line uh, note to supply. And then we'll now click on the details and then have a look at it now. And click on it. And the details will be showing you each and everything now. So line level notes, uh, line level details can be seen this this place now. In the right hand side, the view details icon, if you click on it, it will now show you how much has been received, how much has been uh, invoiced, uh, each and everything on the particular purchase order intelligence is uh, basically shown over there now. So that will be a useful utility for you. So you can now see how much is ordered and then you click on the view details, it will be showing you even further details on this. <clears throat> 
so the header is not showing you all these things no? and the built location duplication whatever you are given there is not coming so line one if you go there go inside whatever the not shows you each and everything no? uh, you can now see uh, what happened there promise date is put the focus is not coming and the request the date also put the focus is also coming over there the carrier is also mentioned over here and <coughs> go on and then try to make changes to this and then uh, uh, do uh, more and more inputs into the system no? the line node is coming but attachment i don't know how to do it no? in, the, in the immediate template Back to put the attachment so that what happens is becoming so there is an R&D for you and then please intimate me about how to do the attachment which field we have to do the attachment on this. Uh, we have a line level attachment, header level attachment, everything is there because certain companies will be asking you to even attach certain files and there's not. We go there done and then we'll now go to the schedules and then have a look at it now. <clears throat> so in the schedules, if you go on and see, uh, uh, you'll be having uh, in the receiving parameters so many things. So they will all be getting defaulted on this place now. So we'll have a look at the schedules. Now, if I click on the schedules, now. <clears throat> the schedules will be having lots of information on this now. So on the schedules, once when you go, you can even click on the details now. So once when you go to the schedules, I'm now in the schedule now. Schedule is it to go now. So once when it is gone, what happens? You can even click on the details actually. Wait for it now. In the meantime, what happens? We go there and then have a look at it now. This one. Uh, go there. Uh, this is the item actually. So the configure program we already seen actually. And then if you go in and search, and go to the manage receiving parameters. In the manage receiving parameters, you'll be having lots of information of mine. That will be uh, basically uh, got populated. It picks up from this place and then it is now getting defaulted in the purchase order actually. So we are given the yearly receipt tolerance as three days, the late receipt tolerance as five days now. Uh, is a receipt loading standard point and then should take some exact. So all these things will also be getting uh, populated on this place now. This place will go there. So go there. Click on the details icon of this now. And click on the, I'm already the schedules now. Click on the now. So whatever you're given the receiving parameters, they will be getting defaulted onto the receiving of the schedules now. So the schedules have come over here now. In this place, you can now see that whatever the, the early result date three and then five <coughs> and the result four so one seven standard result and then a shift exceptions reject and this is the coming. Uh, the order and PO is also coming from somewhere else, and then the PO charge account has also come over here. Now. This is now picked up from the managed mapping set. Now. A quote receipt is now coming. <clears throat> so, uh, you can now see the scheduled note receiver is now coming. The scheduled note receiver is now coming. So, there you can see the line level note receiver. Now, you have seen the scheduled note receiver. Now. So, click on that, and then you'll now go to the distributions. Now, in the distributions, you can now see uh, all the three charge accounts from the managed mapping set will be getting populated on this now. <clears throat> So I am in the distributions and then I'm going to click on the details now. We go inside and then have a look at it now. Can you see the chart account coming on the main line? 12 into 3 is 36 is the total line. And then all of the information we have seen now. Right? We'll now have a look at the last one of the distributions. Now we are into the distributions. You go down and have a look at it now. <clears throat> so we are having the PO charge account, PO uh, accrual account, and then the PO variance account over here now. So we are not to mention any uh, accounts in the FBDA template actually. So you may be remembering about our how the different accounts are default in the POS and in the third third file, the fusion purchasing accounting, I have clearly explained to you about how various accounts are done and I have created this many accounts to demonstrate. And then uh, uh, we have seen about asset into asset sub inventory, asset into expense sub inventory, expense into asset, and then uh, uh, that was expense, into, expense sub inventory. All these things have been demonstrated to you. And so, so do go through this. And then uh, one more thing is uh, on this place, the defaulting. Uh, I have shown you this place now. If you go to the fusion procurement documentation, you can see the PO header schedule defaulting. So this is defaulting will now help you about how uh, different uh, fields from different, different places are getting defaulted in different documents. Actually. So this this field is now coming over here now. And this field, this field. So this way, what happens? It defaults into the different documents. So this document also will be very helpful for you in understanding the. Uh, defaulting. So even if you miss certain things on the immediate template, what happens? It will be getting defaulted from some other place to the header into line schedules and distributions. So this completes uh, what happens a demo on how to uh, uh, what happens, uh, uh, create or otherwise import a purchase order into the system. And we'll be doing a lot. And all the open POS before you go into the uh, live systems, what happens? We had imported now. So you can use this uh, template uh, with the filled in template, which I am now going to load, upload into our Google Drive now, so that you can see now. So we'll now see on the next record on a different subject. Right. Best wishes to all of you for a prosperous career in Fusion Apps. Nana here. Bye. Signing off.